Hello, everybody, and welcome back. As always, I am Mateo311, and this is your channel for everything VR related. Today, we're going over the most anticipated games for the remainder of 2023 and into 2024. Now, I will be organizing this video based on my hype level, so games that I'm not super excited for come in the beginning, and those games that I just can't wait to sink my teeth into will be towards the end. I'll also make sure to let you know why you should be excited about these games and any concerns I have, because... You know, there's always a little skepticism or something to worry about for new releases. Now, there are, of course, links and timestamps if you want to skip ahead. But before we jump in, this video is brought to you by VR Rock, developers of prescription lens inserts for all of your favorite VR headsets. They now support both the Pimax Crystal and PlayStation VR 2, in addition to other headsets like the Quest 2. So if you're struggling with glasses in your VR headset, or you just want to make things a bit easier or more comfortable, go check out the prescription lens inserts from VR Rock. There's a link down in the description, and don't forget to use my discount code for 10% off and to help support this channel. Okay, so first up on this list is Attack on Titan Unbreakable. Now, this is going to be based on the anime series that so many people love, but unfortunately, I've never watched, so it does limit my hype level overall. There's plenty of mechanics here that could work great, you know, like grappling, hooking across the world, and fighting gigantic monsters, but we're yet to see any gameplay. And again, I'm not super familiar with the source material here, so it's harder for me to be interested. But for those who love the series, this could be a major setup for disappointment. Just think about any time a great anime series gets turned into a live action film. 99% of the time, it's a major L. Okay, so next up is Bulletstorm, and I actually played this first person shooter on flat screen years ago. It's full of action, fast paced, and has these really cool mechanics where you're like lassoing people into you and trying to go for like style point kills. I think it can work really, really well in VR, but since I've played it already, my excitement isn't top of the list. I definitely want to jump back into it. I'm sure it'll be a fun time for people who have never experienced the game. Uh, the pacing is different than what we usually get these days. So two thumbs up there, excitement level, and I think it could be pretty good. I'm not worried about this one too much. Now, continuing with first person shooters, we have Firewall Ultra. Now, why I'm so excited about this game is one, it's a combination of both co-op and pvp modes plus it's the first shooter that's built for next gen technology this is being made for the playstation vr2 so with it we'll get some high quality graphics additionally the game will utilize some amazing features like those adaptive triggers head haptics and eye tracking i'm expecting this game to wow us but after the flop that was solaris off-world combat and their latest gameplay trailer that just looked really crappy almost like hides the fact that this is a vr game I don't know, my hype level is diminishing. Moving on, I'm pretty hyped for the action combat title, Hellsweeper. This is a mature rated game, which is right up my alley. It's absolutely brutal and utilizes some really cool VR mechanics. So overall, the gameplay should be top notch, but again, this is another roguelike, so I'm not super excited. I would prefer a linear storyline with a progression system, but that won't stop the fact that the combat in this game is absolutely fantastic. And while we're discussing roguelikes, Underdogs is looking absolutely fantastic. Now, I love the art style in this game, and I'm also a big fan of the concept. The fact that you're going to be in this underground fighting arena using mechs to battle it out is pretty damn cool. There's also a ton of gear to unlock. Now, I do have some concerns that couldn't make or break this title, though. One, how well are they going to pull off that combat? It has to feel good. That's the whole game right there. And if they don't pull that off, well it's dead in the water already. And on top of that, I'm just worrying how much overall content there will be. If it's just the same thing over and over again, I'm really not interested. Now, my hype level is definitely increasing as we get to Stranger Things VR. I'm a huge fan of the show, so the spinoff definitely intrigues me, but more so the fact that you're playing as the villain. That right there sounds pretty damn awesome. Exploring the upside down, that's gonna be pretty damn cool. And additionally, the character you play is telekinetic, and that usually works really well in VR. I hope they lean into that aspect. I'm going to be able to like force choke enemies and throw them away and, and use all these bizarre cool powers. And then on top of that, hopefully it ties into the storyline. Cool. Gives us a little bit new aspect of Stranger Things. Where it could go wrong? Well, again, it could have shallow gameplay. It could be like a walking simulator. I am afraid, though, that its relationship to Stranger Things might just be cosmetic and it really doesn't end up doing the show any justice. Now, the next game on the list has shot up in terms of hype for me, and that's Assassin's Creed Nexus. 
A few months ago, we didn't even know if this game was still in production after a supposed three plus years of work. But now we know it's coming and it's looking pretty damn good. The trailer showed off by Ubisoft didn't show much, but if you went looking for screenshots, I'm definitely intrigued now. And VR needs more stealth titles. I believe the mechanics in Assassin's Creed will work phenomenally well if done right. Climbing up walls, jumping down on your enemies, you know, diving into hay bales, sneaking around, and then finishing off some people when they don't expect it. Yeah, that all sounds good. We need more stealth options in VR, and I am looking forward to this one. The Assassin's Creed series also usually tells a great story, so I'm looking forward to that too. But now we're finally getting into the games that I'm extremely hyped for, and the first one is Crossfire Sierra Squad. This first-person shooter looks like everything I want. Just extreme action, non-stop, explosions that'll make Michael Bay jealous, and different gameplay modes, including two-player co-op and four-player horde modes. If that's not enough, there's also a realism mode if you want to slow things down and be a little bit more strategic in your gameplay. It's the first-person shooter that gives me everything I'm looking for. Sure, I'd like something with a little bit more serious tone, but those diversions that are just fun are amazing. Luckily, the release date is rapidly approaching, but unfortunately, I probably won't be covering it on the channel because I'm on vacation when the game becomes available. Now, if you're not as excited about our next title as I am, that's understandable because I'm talking about Ghostbusters Rise of the Ghost Lord. This is another four-person co-op shooter, but unlike something like Left 4 Dead or After the Fall, where it's a bit more mature themed and you're fighting zombies, this one is a little bit more cartoony and centered around fun. Now, again, that's not usually my style, but I really think it's just going to be a really fun title. And they have stated that there is an emphasis on storytelling, which I always enjoy. So I'm looking forward to that. I just love games that I could jump into with my friends, not have to worry too much, think too much, try too hard sometimes, just sit back and have a good time. And I really think Ghostbusters is going to deliver that. Now, where can it go wrong? It could just have crappy mechanics. That's it. Crappy mechanics. The graphics are looking pretty good, though. So I'm not concerned there. And graphics, you know, don't make or break your game for me. But if the mechanics aren't right and it's not fun or it's too grindy, too repetitive, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a no for me, dog. But I'm still pretty hyped. Now I'm equally excited and scared for our next title, and that's the Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines. If you're not familiar with the series, it's a tabletop game and also one of the best PC RPGs ever made. There was an extremely deep storyline with meaningful decisions, a robust character creation and class system that let you utilize a huge array of different vampiric powers, and it took place in an amazingly well-built world. If this title is able to capture a fraction of that experience, it should be a huge win. I'm not expecting a 40 to 60 hour campaign, but if it is something like 10 to 20 hours with that same level of decision making and high quality combat, I'm going to love this game. RPGs are underrepresented in VR, and I hope they don't skimp on those mechanics. Now, I'm also really excited for Behemoth. This is another really dark setting, gritty world, kind of like hopeless atmosphere where you're cursed and just traveling through a deserted land with the main goal of just surviving. Since this title comes from Skydance, the developers of The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, I'm expecting high quality combat and some good overall production value. My concerns here though are we haven't seen any actual gameplay yet and it could be nothing like the cinematic trailer or they just spend too much time on developing an atmosphere and don't focus on those gameplay mechanics. Overall, there's just too many unknowns for this title, but I'm still really pumped for it. And finally, we have what I believe will be a contender for VR's game of the year, and that's Asgard's Wrath 2. Now, if you're not familiar with this, it is an RPG set in that world of Asgard. You're going to be battling Loki. The original game had you becoming a god uh, using all these different champions who had lots of different fighting abilities and weapons and skills. And you were also making companion creatures. That was one of your godly abilities. The title did an amazing job of storytelling. They really knew how to use perspective, something that is a big deal in VR. It was 40 plus hours long and highly addictive. Now I'm expecting all of that and more from the second game, but unfortunately where things go downhill a little bit is this is only on Quest 2 and eventually Quest 3. It's no longer a PC title. So those amazing graphics we originally got, well, we're not going to get them this time. The game does look really good in terms of Quest 2 quality, 
but we know the comparison between PC and Quest 2. There's a huge difference. Now, even with the graphical downgrade, it doesn't mean the game will be less fun. And I just, you know, I just hope they're also able to capture the combat. Again, we're downgrading to a mobile platform, so the chipset isn't as powerful, so the physics might take a hit. Hope that's not a case. That is my concern. But overall, that game looks amazing. We need more RPGs in VR, like I already said, like I always say. And hopefully, this one brings it. Okay, everybody, that was today's video. If you enjoyed it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If I missed any titles that you can't wait for, let me know what they are down in the comments. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I'll see you guys on next time.